Hello people, thank you. Thank you for watching the video. Welcome to my channel Undefined where we talk about different aspects of Salesforce. Today we are trying to define another very important aspect of Salesforce called Bulk API. Uh, but in this, in this session today we will be focusing mostly on the new and the enhanced version of Bulk API called Bulk API, Bulk API 2.0. So for those who don't know, Bulk API is a REST-based API, standard API given by Salesforce, which is mostly used to upload massive amounts of data in Salesforce. And when I say massive, it really means uh, data in terms of millions and billions. In most of the data migration projects and in most of the integration projects where there is a requirement to load millions as in huge number of data sets in Salesforce, the first and the only choice of all the architects is Bulk API. And there are many connectors, there are many integration interfaces, there are many integration platforms uh, which utilize uh, Bulk API under the hood to, to upload such massive data sets in Salesforce. And that's why this topic is very interesting for all the architects and, and also the developers. So we will take a look why Bulk API is, Bulk API 2.0 is such important. Uh, we will look at the features. It's an improved version, enhanced version, which is correct. Much simpler to use because they have rectified many uh, pitfalls uh, from Bulk API version one. Automatic batchification, this used to be a pain point in Bulk API version one. Uh, solely because it was the client who was responsible to, to create all the batches of data. But now Salesforce has taken the responsibility on themselves and now you only need to submit the data and Salesforce will perform the batchification behind the scenes. The daily limit has been changed based on records, number of records. Earlier it used to be based on a number of batches per rolling 24 hours. Now it also supports OAuth 2.0 which makes it more secure. Uh, but the limitation is that Bulk API 2.0 only works from API version 41.0. So if you have any connectors, if you have any uh, integration interfaces that is using an API version less than 41, you will have to upgrade that before you start using Bulk API. So the process, how Bulk API works high level in, in general. So you always start by creating a job and please note everything that I am saying here, all the integration in platforms, for example, MuleSoft or Informatica, if they have a connector for Bulk API, they will be doing everything as I say here, as I depict here uh, in, in the same sequence. So we are trying to understand how those connectors work, how the API behaves. So we always start by creating a job especially using this Bulk API 2.0 specifications. Once that is done, we, we, all, we assume that we already have a set of data in CSV format. So we upload the data to that job and then we close the job by setting, there is a status field on, on the job object which needs to be set. And when you set the status to upload complete, the job is closed, which means that at this point of time, Salesforce starts processing the data. Now earlier, before you close the job in Bulk API version one, you would have to submit multiple batches, but now you can see that you just need to submit one full file and Salesforce will ensure that those uh, the file is automatically batched uh, based on the performance. They have some internal algorithms, which we don't know but we assume that those algorithms have been designed in such a way that it will automatically find out the best possible way. But in general, the rule is that it will divide batches in terms of 10,000s up to the maximum limit, limit, which is 156 zeros. We will see that later. So once Salesforce starts processing the data on the server, uh, in the meantime, you can also issue API calls to see what is the status of the job that you have created. And when the job finishes, the status of the job will change to something else. I guess the value is complete. What we will see um, in, in, in the demo. 
And then finally, you can also retrieve the results. You can retrieve the successful results, or you can also retrieve the uh, the failure, the failed results. Let's also see the limitation. In my opinion, the popular limitations are these. So, in 24 hours, in the rolling 24 hours, you can only have 150 along with six zeros number of records. The max file size, that is one file size, can be 150 megabytes. And this one is very special. I have seen many people doing this mistakes, but until your data is fully, completely processed by Salesforce, do not delete the local data that you have in your laptop or on your server. Now, since we understand why do we use uh, bulk API, uh, it would be great to see a live demo of how it works out. So let's move over to Postman. So this is my Postman. And I have already created a collection where we have uh, the API request. And we will start by the login process. So before any third party system, or before any um, connector or even a custom made connector or any Java application, any .NET application, any application that is residing outside Salesforce before it connects, it has to get a session ID. And to get a session ID, there are different ways. Either you can use a login API, SOAP API call, login call, log, login core API call in SOAP API, or you can also use REST API. In REST API, we have three different ways. Uh, we have a web server uh, flow, we have user agent flow, and we also have a username password based flow. In this particular example, we are using the username password flow. So uh, this is how you, uh, if you have to use Postman, this is how you always uh, provide the form data. And this is the token endpoint where you have to hit the API call. So we support, uh, we, we provide the grant type, which is password. We have the client ID and client secret, and we get these values from the connected app. So I'm assuming that before you, before you reach at this step, you have to make sure that you already have the connected app with the correct scopes. So you have the grant type, you have the client ID, you have the client secret, you have the username, and you have the password concatenated with the security token. So, and you have to always uh, issue a post uh, SCTP call on this endpoint. So when I click on send, so I'll delete this. So this is uh, an old, okay, I cannot delete it. But when I click on send, yeah, so uh, we have got a new access token. We also have the instance URL, we have the ID, we have the token type, which is bearer. And we have some other values. We have a digital signature. We also have the issued at, which is the unique time the current time. So any application, be it a custom application or be it a standard MuleSoft connector, we always start by making a login API call. So once we, once we have the access token, and this is a sensitive data, so I'll have to change all my password and security token by the time you're watching the video. So I'll make sure that this is uh, taken care of. But once you have the access token, which is this one, uh, the connector or uh, yeah or any 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 application which is trying to bulk api has to start by issuing api call towards this endpoint called ingest endpoint so we already have the instance url in the instance url we have to add services data version job and ingest in this format and we have to pass three different headers, authorization header, content type, which is application JSON, and the character set is always UTF-8. And we also accept the application slash JSON. We just need to make sure that the bearer is latest updated. So I'll copy and paste here. So we start by creating a job. So if we remember the slide, we start by creating a job. And here we are trying to create a job. So when we click on send, and we are making a post HTTP call here. So we click on send, and we get a response from Salesforce. We have this ID, operation, object is account, created by ID, state is open, 
and concurrency mode is parallel content type is csv i forgot to mention but when we issued a post we also sent a body request where we specify the object content type operation and line editing if the operation was delete we would write delete if the operation was absurd we would write absurd line editing is crlf so once we have the response it means that the job has been created so if we go to salesforce and if i click on refresh you would be able to see that we have we already have a job waiting for uh, waiting to get processed so you can see the job is in progress it is in open state on account object and insert operation okay so now we have the response so we can query this particular id content url and we are concerned about this id because this is the job id so the second step would be to load the data so we will simply copy this id and this is the end point where you have to load the data so you always prefix the job at the end of the ingest and in the body we are passing the data so here you pass the csv data so for example uh, let's call it bulk 10 bulk 11 right so this is the data that we are passing again so once we have the csv data like this and you can imagine this is a demo data but in reality the csv data file would like be much bigger than this one so again the headers are same we just need to make sure that the bear is bearer is correct so i'll just uh, copy this value again and i'll go to this bearer and paste it here the body is ready and once i click on send it will simply say one which means that it has been received and we can see that st uh, see that status is 201 created so far nothing at this point of time the data has been sent to server but it's still not processing we, st we still can see that the job is in progress still the job is a uh, open state all right once this is done then we have the third api call where we have to make a patch http call to the job id so we will copy the job id again from here and paste it here and the bearer will be again it needs to be copied from here and paste it here okay authorization content type except everything is same body in body we, we pass the state to upload complete and at this point of time when salesforce uh, when the status of this job changes to upload complete salesforce will start processing the data so let's see how it looks like so when we click on send it says uh, we have the id operation object and we also have the state which is upload complete the concurrency mode is parallel going back to this page click on refresh we can see that yeah so this was the job the job has been completed and we have three records already uh, which was processed and none of them failed which is good now we can always find the records in salesforce but before we do that let's try to use these endpoints to get the successful records so this is the endpoint for successful records so we will copy the job id from here paste it here we also need to copy the valid uh, bearer token from here so we'll copy this from here and paste it in the authorization header so we are passing the right bearer token uh, again this is same and we will just issue this api call and we can see that we have those three ids the salesforce record ids all of them were created and we also have the names if we had to find um, all the failed uh, records then i'm assuming i don't exactly remember the spelling but i think it is failed results which is the end point so if i replace uh, this endpoint with failed results 
I don't know if this is correct or not. Yeah, it's a failed results. So we don't have any failure. So for now, let's replace it with successful. And send. Yeah. So as you can see, it's a one, two, three, four, five step process. And these five steps are general process which are followed by every custom integration application or MuleSoft or as a matter of fact, any connector which is using bulk API 2.0 behind the scenes. So we start by login, we create a job, we put the data in the job, we change the job status to upload complete, Salesforce starts processing the data. When the processing is done, we simply uh, can find the list of successful results or the failed results. In the meantime, when the job was running, we could have also found the status of the running job. So we also have the endpoint for that. And that's how all the systems, nearly all the connectors or any client set application using bulk API works. But since we have talked about this, we also have something called as multi-part, multi-part request. Multi-part request means that in the same API call, you are creating a job and you are also passing that data. So as you saw, we had one, two, three, four, and five steps in multi-part. It's only two steps. The first step is login. And the second step is where you pass on the information about which object you want to create the data for. And also you pass on the data. So this is how the multi-part request body looks like. So you always have to make sure that the author, the content type of any multi-part HTTP call is multi-part slash form data. And this is an industry-wide practice. It's not specific to Salesforce, but it's specific to any client which is uh, performing a multi-part request to server. So this uh, authorization, again, we have to get the latest bearer token from here and paste it here. And if we go to the body, we can see that account, CSV, insert, CRMF, okay? We will keep it the same. And then we have a boundary, which means that the, the anything above line number 12 is part one. Anything from line number 12 is part two. So here we can simply write 11, 12, and I'll write one more record, bulk multi yeah so you can see in this multi-part request you are telling salesforce to create a job for account object and then you're also telling salesforce to submit this data we have also made sure that the authorization header is correct and now when i click on send it's a post request, by the way. Yeah, we got the successful response. And if I click on refresh on Salesforce, yeah, yeah, one more. And you can see the job has been completed already. So multi-part request is a great way to combine your API request calls in one API. And Salesforce, uh, the API client is handling behind the scenes on how to divide those requests into two. But uh, you can see that we have converted the five-step process to two-step process. All right, so we have seen how Bulk well API works. And I hope this will help you understand more on how Bulk well API used to work under the hood. In the next session, I'm going to talk about how can we use Bulk API query and how can we use bulk API to submit binary files to Salesforce server. But for now, please do let me know in the comments on how did you like the video. I'm still trying to improve my video skills. Uh, please leave any questions. And please remember that the intention of this video was to understand how bulk API works under the hood and what happens behind the scene. 
because many a times we simply talk about using connector switch but, but we don't understand how those connectors work and this is how the connectors work it is a series and sequence of api calls that happens behind the scenes that performs and completes all the tasks you can also imagine that we can also write our own java application or our own any node.js for example application to to automate everything that we have just done so i think uh, it's a great way to learn uh, using postman to submit these uh, api calls to salesforce and to see the response actually in front of your eyes is a different kind of experience so thank you very much for, uh, for today thank you very much for the time and i'll uh, see you around stay safe